Now we get to those four words that are the title of this episode. You have most likely heard this phrase used before in various contexts. Journalists use it, historians use it, presidents use it in their speeches all the time. And this phrase is still seen by many Americans to embody what this country is all about. At the same time, there are also segments of our society that mock and deride this phrase. We are going to dissect this phrase together, its meaning then in 1630, and what it can mean for us today. And then you decide how this phrase should be viewed. Here it is. For we must consider that we shall be as a city upon a hill. The eyes of all people are upon us. When you first hear it, it sounds kind of bold presumptuous, arrogant even. But what is Winthrop actually trying to say here? As I stressed in the last episode, if we want to understand why people of the past did the things that they did, we have to understand them in their own context. As a religious person, Winthrop and all of the rest of the Puritans on that ship would have believed that they have a responsibility to something bigger than themselves that they have a responsibility to act in a way that elevates humanity and glorifies God. So by saying that they must consider that the eyes of all people are upon them, that everyone is watching what they are doing, John Winthrop is expressing the concept that everything we do exists in the broader context of being a part of something bigger than us, a piece of a greater whole, that our actions don't exist in a vacuum. And therefore, we have a responsibility to set an example for others with our actions. Winthrop realizes that if they consider that everyone is watching them, then they have an inherent and inescapable responsibility that comes with being a human being. He then says a few words on what he thinks that responsibility means. He says, so that if we shall deal falsely with our God in this work we have undertaken, and so cause him to withdraw his present help from us, we shall be made a story and a byword through the world. Meaning, if we do not act with honesty and integrity, and I'm applying this to you and I now, if we do not act with honesty and integrity, do not do what we say we are going to do, then our actions will be meaningless. They will be nothing more than a story and a byword. But Winthrop's not quite done yet. He goes on to say that not only will our dishonesty and lack of integrity hurt us by making our actions nothing more than a byword, but also we shall shame the faces of many of God's worthy servants and cause their prayers to be turned into curses upon us till we be consumed out of the good land whither we are going. He is saying that we not only shame ourselves when we act dishonestly and without integrity, but we also bring shame to others. How is that? Well, if I, as a teacher, act without integrity and, and honesty, then not only do I shame myself, but I shame my entire profession and to a larger extent, humanity as a whole. This is the universal lesson that Winthrop is revealing in this great document. I want you to just think about something for a second. Look at how something that was said on a ship in the middle of the ocean 400 years ago is able to reach out and teach us something today about what it means to live together in a society, about taking responsibility for our actions. This, this is why we study history. Not for the facts, not for the dates, not for the final exam, but for this. This is why it matters. Winthrop ends his sermon with these words. Therefore, let us choose life, 
that we and our seed may live by obeying his voice and cleaving to him, for he is our life and our prosperity. When people today refer to the United States as a city upon a hill, that phrase does not assert that the United States is perfect or ever was perfect. That's not what it means at all. Nobody means that when they use it. It is not saying that everyone else should want to be just like us. It is saying that we recognize our, our responsibility in the human drama. And as individuals, it means that you and I, we understand when we act, especially when we act on a grand scale, it is not a solitary act. We are not acting in isolation. The Puritans, they understood this. They got it. They understood that they were participants on the stage of human history and their actions would be judged by their God and by all of his creation because we are all part of that same creation. Consider that the United States is only 232 years young and therefore the practice of the principles of natural, natural rights, self-government, individual freedoms, popular sovereignty, checks and balances, freedom of speech, I could go on and on. The practice of all those things are also only 232 years young. Maybe that seems like a long time to you at your age, but in the scheme of 10,000 years of human history and human civilization, those principles are still a baby. So. Since building a nation on those principles began here with us, the example that we set on them matters. Are they just words or do they really mean something? Are we going to deal with them honestly, with integrity? Are we going to hold up our end of the covenant that we made over those principles in the Declaration of Independence and in the Constitution? Those are covenants made with the people over those principles. So. How we conduct ourselves in this effort is of human importance, not just American importance. So do I think the United States is still a city upon a hill? Yeah, just like we all are. And we as individuals and America as a nation need to act like we understand that responsibility, like the Puritans did. <laughs>